The Messerschmitt, ME-163 Comet. This World War II aircraft broke records during the war. It was the first piloted aircraft to ever exceed 1,000 kilometers per hour, that's 620 miles per hour, in level flight. This was the fastest aircraft of World War II, but that is in part because it was a death trap, a volatile rocket with wings. You could almost be forgiven for thinking Wiley e. Coyote was in charge of the aircraft's development. Today, it remains the only rocket-powered operational fighter aircraft to ever see service, and for good reason. The most dangerous aspect of piloting the Comet was not enemy gunfire, it was the rocket propellant, which was highly volatile and extremely corrosive. A ruptured or leaky fuel line could be enough to kill a pilot. Fuel for the rocket consisted of two deadly substances. T-Stoff was 80% hydrogen peroxide, water, and traces of stabilizers, including phosphoric acid. This was the oxidizer. C-Stoff was the fuel, a methanol hydrazine water mixture. The two substances were highly reactive with each other and visibly looked identical. Handling the chemicals was done with extreme care. T-Stoff required a rubberized suit for handling. It corroded iron and steel and could only be kept in aluminum tanks. Seastoff ate through aluminum and had to be kept in glass or enamel. The fuels could ignite organic fibers and dissolve flesh. Special suits were worn by the pilots to hopefully prevent their flesh from melting if fuel seeped into the cockpit. The fuel tanks were situated directly behind and to either side of the pilot. The Germans had no doubt the best rocket scientists of the war, and development of the 163 Comet began two years before World War II, in 1937. The Comet prototype took its maiden flight, September 1, 1941, with impressive results in terms of intercept speed, which would end up making it ideal as a point defense interceptor across Germany. The aircraft was only capable of 7.5 minutes of powered flight, but it could quickly reach bomber altitude with enough power to strike at a bomber formation and then glide back to Earth. The aircraft can stay aloft for over 25 minutes by using a combination of powered flight and gliding. In July of 1944, one comet unofficially reached an airspeed of 1,130 kilometers an hour, or 700 miles per hour, with some reports indicating the aircraft may have broken the sound barrier but this event can't be verified. The first official documented breaking of the sound barrier would go to the Bell X-1 in October of 1947. Shown here is the X-1A variant. The Comet would not enter full operational service until 1944. By the end of the war, approximately 370 Comets would be built the aircraft no doubt would have shocked Allied pilots who witnessed it tear across the sky, with both great speed and surprising maneuverability. However, the Comet would only come to credit downing between 9 and 18 Allied aircraft, while 10 Comets were shot down during interceptions. The Luftwaffe's first dedicated Comet fighter wing, JG-400, was formed February 1, 1944, deployed near Leipzig, it was to protect the synthetic gasoline works in the area, with fuel becoming increasingly the target of Allied bombings. The Comet was armed with two 30mm cannons, but speed during flight could hamper the Comet's ability to shoot at an enemy, overtaking their target before having a chance to properly aim. Tactics for Comet pilots developed. Typically, the Comet would zoom through the bomber formation too fast for bomber gunners, they would climb to 40,000 feet and then power dive through the formation. This provided two opportunities to target a bomber. Allies also developed tactics to deal with the Comet. Though fighter aircraft couldn't catch a Comet in the air, they could comfortably follow them back to their airfields and gun them down while they were trying to land. A promising weapon was designed to help Comets shoot down bombers. The Jagdfaus was a single-shot 50mm upward-firing air-to-air cannon. They were mounted vertically in rows along the fuselage. A photocell connected to the Comet 
triggered the guns once under and in the shade of an enemy aircraft. The change in brightness fired the gun. This was experimental and mounted on very few comets, but it did result in the downing of a Lancaster bomber in April of 1945. Pilots had to overcome many challenges with the comet. Climb speed was 81 meters a second, compared to a P-51D Mustangs at 16 meters a second. Pilots experienced completely new issues related to swift climbing and high service ceilings, and they were without a pressured cabin or pressure suits. Rapid change in air pressure put a pilot's ears and even their digestive tract at risk. Pilots had to be put on special low-fiber diets to reduce gas. There were many ways the Comet could put a pilot's life at risk. The aircraft was light, built of wood and duralumium. Empty, it weighed 1,905 kilograms or 4,200 pounds. When not using its rockets, the aircraft needed to glide. Keeping the weight down and adding to the simplicity of the aircraft, the aircraft took off using a wheeled trolley device that was jettisoned during takeoff. This also wanted to kill the pilot. The wheels could bounce up and hit the aircraft during takeoff, which killed at least one pilot. Landing the aircraft required skill. View from the cockpit was restricted due to the flat angle of the glide. The aircraft touched down at around 200 kilometers an hour or 120 miles per hour. To land, a skid was extended, which would absorb shock, but still back injuries were frequent for pilots during landings. Further complicating landing was the aircraft's excellent design as a glider. Wind would sometimes push the Comet up, causing it to overshoot a runway. For safety, pilots frequently tried to land without fuel on board, so it was not always possible to fly around for a second landing attempt. An unusual feature of the Comet was the nose propeller, called a Seppler propeller. This propeller was driven by the airstream in flight and would charge the aircraft's battery secured in the nose. As the Comet didn't have a motor to charge a battery or mechanically power any devices, this was a clever solution to power the Comet's electrical systems. In 1944, the Germans provided schematics for the Comet to the Japanese. The Japanese would develop the Mitsubishi J8M based on the German technology. Seven operational versions were built, but the Japanese also had issues with the volatile fuel, and the aircraft would not see action during the war. The Japanese did create a rocket aircraft of their own during the war, but this was not a fighter, rather a manned flying bomb known as the Oka. By September of 1944, J.G. Wing had only 11 serviceable comets available, and not enough pilots to fly all 11. In this same month, the two main factories producing the scarce and volatile fuel for the aircraft were bombed. This ground the program to a crawl for the rest of the war. Aircraft were available, but there was no fuel or resources to train pilots. Less than a quarter of the aircraft produced ever saw combat, and several were captured by the Allies at the end of the war. Ultimately, the rocket fighter and its Walter engines were easy to produce, but pointlessly so without pilots. The Comet proved it could take on bomber formations, but no better than any other German aircraft. The concept of rocket fighters was ultimately replaced by unmanned rockets. However, rocket technology did become more frequently used with more conventional aircraft. Rocket boosters have been used on a variety of aircraft to aid in short runway or heavy load takeoffs. This concept was popular during the Cold War to be used in the event of runway destruction. All right, I'm Johnny. Thank you for watching. Normally I end the video with a pun, but I just couldn't commit to one. Time for me to take off, and I'll see you at the next launch.